Now I can see the light from the main hall. It isn't that far ahead. The maid I met this morning is waiting outside the main hall. She runs over as soon as she sees me. Evil, Your Excellency, here you are. They're all waiting for you inside. Am I late? Almost. I was so worried that I sent a maid to check your room, but you'd already left. I apologize for worrying you. I did get a little sidetracked. But I'm here now. Please lead the way. The corridor is lit by dozens of candles, invisible apparently. Coming out of the darkness, my eyes are unprepared for so much light. Trying to take in all the extravagant decorations all at once is overwhelming. The maid stops a few times to check me, giving me time to adjust to the light. After a while, we stop in front of a giant double door. Taking a deep breath, she knocks on it. His Excellency, Elrell Rice has arrived. You may enter, Finn. The voice that beckons was deep, rich, and female. Oh, there's only one voice I can use for that one. Really. There's only one voice I can use. The dining hall is as brightly lit as the corridor was. I'm relieved my eyes had the chance to adjust before I was presented to the princesses. Here is a long table in the middle of the hall filled with desserts. Maids are standing in the shadows near the doorway. The true hostesses, the princesses, are seated in their chairs at the table. I feel a bit nervous facing so many noble ladies. I take a quick glance at each of them as I approach. They are all looking at me, all except one who has her head lowered. She is as beautiful and lonely as the ice-covered peaks of a mountaintop. Taking a deep breath to steal myself, I kneel before the table. I, Arel Rice, have come at the command of His Majesty the Emperor to prepare the 37th Miracle Play. To prepare you for your roles from this day on, I am to serve as your fencing instructor, and this is getting silly, Totoro Becca. You can be called Totoro Becca because that's your name in the chat. Miss Fujimoto is called Miss Fujimoto in the chat. Don't annoy me, please. Welcome. The first to stand up is a voluptuous woman in silk. Hers is a voice which beckoned me to enter. My name is Intelia, Instruanda Andreas, the instructor of the garden. And you may never leave. We are welcome, we all welcome your arrival at the oblivious garden of Rel Rice, your excellency. She gestures for me to rise. It is a pleasure to be here, your highness. All three of you. <laughs> a scoff comes from another side of the table. I did nothing wrong, but because she's a princess, I can only plaster on a fragile smile. May I know each of your names? I wonder if there was some protocol I was supposed to follow. Was I too forward? The princesses start to whisper amongst themselves. Oh... There we go. There's, 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 there's the boyish one. Hmm. How should we voice this one? Hmm. Yeah, you keep your dirty thoughts to yourself, Fat Frog. Um. The game is Oblivious Garden. Um, we're playing a, a rail rice who is yeah that one we're playing a rail rice a, a, a disgraced general who has to educate seven princesses in the way of fencing for the miracle play whatever that is
Yeah, I think you're right. I heard he used to be a general. <laughs> so slim. You don't look like a general. Where's your sword? Undo your trousers and show me immediately. Generals don't have to be strong. Okay, it's got to be done. A general? A general who's won a lot of victories. Hmm. Lynn seems more interested in the table settings than in me. Don't eat that, chestnuts. That one has such a strange pet. The atmosphere starts to grow awkward. On the surface, they seem like perfect noblewomen, but they are different from the nobles I knew before. Now Her Highness has everyone's attention again. Please introduce yourself, my dear Highnesses, so that we may get along better in the future. She glances at me. She knows how to control the situation. You've been a very naughty boy and must be punished. Which of the princesses would you like to be introduced to first? Okay, the curious princess dressed in blue, the elegant princess dressed in... Oh, doesn't matter. That one. I would... Uh, it's probably going to be a very important decision. I would like to get to know the princess in the blue dress. Or Diana, I believe. Well, Diana, your turn. She just stares at me without any comprehension in her eyes. Huh? Diana, your highness. Ah! What voice did I use for her? I've forgotten. We've done too many voices too fast. Which voice did I use? Is there a William? It better not be a William. There won't be a William for much longer if there is one. Oh, did I use a voice for her? Um. Yeah, what voice did I use for her? Um, well, it doesn't matter. What voice do I use for her from now on? Oh, oh yeah, that was the one I gave the Scottish accent to, wasn't it? I'm, uh, um, Diana Serabusa. Ouch! Never before had I seen someone try to speak so quickly that they bit their own tongue. Ooch, ooch, ooch! She looks rather cute in tears, with tears in her eyes. I punch her in the nose just to see it some more. My apologies. Diana is the most recent addition to our garden and has yet to adjust to life here. I am the one. Uh, um, <clears throat> I am the one who should apologise. My introduction to the Roseland this morning was not properly formal, my lady. I see. Oh, oh, hold on. We met her last time. We met. We met her last time round. I've given the wrong voice. I gave her the wrong voice. She was the one I gave Dora's voice to, wasn't she? Yes, right. Okay, well, don't forget what I said earlier, okay? Just imagine I said it like this. My name is Diana Sirabusa. Although this is not our first encounter, it's nice to make your acquaintance. Her greeting is formal, proper for a princess. However, there are still tears in her eyes. I punch her in the nose again, because they look so cute. Something is different about her this evening. I can't quite put my finger on it. Because if I would, she'd slap me. It is my honour to meet you, Your Highness. I should write these voices down, you're probably right. Um, it's been a month and a day since we last played this, so what I should do is play it more often. 
She takes a deep breath and sits back down. The young princess whispers to her. She must be comforting her. Okay, we shall talk to the quiet eastern princess. I look around at the princesses. They're all so beautiful. The quiet girl in the traditional eastern garb catches my eye. The dinner party is going strong. I overheard the maids gossiping earlier. They are saying that it's unusual for all the princesses to gather together like this. The party is a rare opportunity for them to socialize in one group. But Lynn doesn't seem as excited as everyone else. In fact, she seems totally disinterested in what's going on around her. She is as silent as she was when we were alone this morning. All the other girls are eagerly waiting for me to call their names. But she doesn't display the same enthusiasm. Somebody once told me that names have power, and she knew my names. All of them. Names I'd forgotten, names I didn't ever want to hear again. That was more than idle curiosity. She had an interest in me before I came here. I want to know her name. I want to find out how she knew of me. I catch Intellia's attention with my eyes and then glance towards the ever-silent Eastern Princess. Intellia gives me a smile and a nod to go ahead. I quietly walk towards the enigmatic girl's seat and kneel beside her. May I have your name, O oh lovely princess? She looks at me. Mm. She glances around at the other princesses. She doesn't look displeased that I've asked, only confused. Intelia nods her head in encouragement. Finally, the girl whispers to me. Ling Zaning. But she isn't quite done. Leaping upon me, she starts ripping my... No, 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 no. You can call me Lin. Then she closes her eyes and lowers her head again. Silence descends on the room once more. I guess that is all I get. I don't know what else to do. Luckily for me, Intelia does. She keeps the party moving along. The evening moves along smoothly and I'm introduced to each of the seven princesses, but after all is said and done, there is one more name I want to ask for. Lyra has been staring at her teacup ever since I entered the courtroom. Looking at her, you get the impression that she expects to discover all the secrets of the universe from the tea leaves. Well... I want to know more about the princess drinking tea over there. Liera. Splendid. Please introduce yourself, Liera. After a pause, she puts down her cup and turns her cold gaze on me. Your Excellency, Real Rice, you already know my name, is Liera, Liera di Cerebrusa. It's nice to meet you. Oh, wrong voice. It's nice to meet you. She doesn't like me. I don't think anyone missed the sarcasm in her voice. We're just too different. I'll need to find common ground if I want to befriend her. It is nice to meet you too. I hope we can get along well in the future. Is that bunny thing in her hair? Yep, that's a little rabbit hair grip. You've got to bear in mind this is a Japanese game. Some advice for you, former Baron. Even if you are a plebeian, you are here at my father's command. You must still comport yourself like a gentleman. He would be happy to instruct you, for it seems you have forgotten your manners while in exile. Ouch. Still hostile. The other princesses' faces reveal various degrees of pity and mortification in response to her words. Hopefully, I can find a way to smooth that relationship later. 
I will keep your words in mind. You don't have to make me any promises. Remember your lesson from earlier, Aurel Rice. I do, thank you. It is still my honor to meet you. The same, I'm sure, Aurel Rice. After finishing her address, she sits back down and returns to her tea. Her voice never warmed. 